Hi, I'm David Lee, and I'd like to welcome you all to our program, Outside the Book. We're here at the Southern Kentucky Festival of Books, and we've got a lineup of really intriguing authors to spend a little time with today. And the first of these is, is Bobby Ann Mason. For some 30 years, Bobby Ann Mason has been one of the most preeminent writers in American life. In novels and short stories, she's painted a tremendous portrait of the South in change in the years after World War II, and a lot of her stories are rooted in her native Kentucky. Bobby Ann, thanks very much for being with us on this program here oh, this morning. Thank you. You you have a new book, the the girl in the in the blue beret, and I'm intrigued by it in a, for a number of reasons. But just as an opening question, why at, at this stage in your career? did you choose to write a book that's set in World War II? Um, it wasn't a conscious decision. It came upon me. It was inspired by um, something that happened to my father-in-law during World War II. Uh, it was a familiar story to me, but it hadn't occurred to me to uh, make it into a work of fiction until um, I was taking a uh, French class and my father-in-law had been a B-17 pilot who was shot down during the war. And um, the French resistance helped to get him to safety, to get him back to his base in England. And um, so during the time he was in France, he had to be hidden by people who um, risked their lives to help him and feed him and uh, hide him. And um, so when I was taking the French class, I started to think about what it might have been like for him as a 23-year-old aviator stranded in a foreign country with the enemy surrounding him and having to pretend to be French and to not know the language and to have to say bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, one thing led to another and I realized um, uh, that uh, there might be a story there. Uh, one of his um, helpers, uh, his guides, had been a girl who wore something blue. He couldn't remember if it was a beret or a scarf, but I seized on the girl in the blue beret, and I thought, there's my title, and I'm taking French, so I'll go to France and find the story. I'm intrigued with how you, how you did the research. How, how, because this doesn't involve just going to, to libraries. This is a much more complicated research structure. How, how did you do that? Uh, there were two things. One's, uh, one is that I read an awful lot of narratives um, about that experience of uh, aviators trying to get out of Europe uh, uh, who had crash landed or parachuted. There are a lot of narratives, and um, there are a lot of narratives of the French. So I, I uh, tried to immerse myself in that experience by reading. And then the second thing is that I went to France and met some people. I met some people who had helped my father-in-law, and they proved to be great inspirations, valuable sources, and ultimately very good friends. Is, is this an experience that he talked about a lot, that you heard a lot from him about? My father-in-law talked about his experience, and he actually wrote a little memoir. Um, and he always made light of it. And when I got involved in reading about it, about uh, crossing the Pyrenees when it, it's um, up to his uh, uh, thighs in snow, um, and about that period in spring of 1944, um, it was far more dangerous than he admitted, and, um, or maybe even knew at the time. Uh, but he tried to make light of it and make a good story out of it. But I was shocked to find out what was really going on during the war and how scary it was and how, how much the, these um, Europeans risked their lives to help the aviators. In fact, one of the things the book has been particularly praised for is the window you provide on the, on the French resistance. Tell, uh, tell us a little bit about how you pulled that together. Well, this is one aspect of the resistance, which is very, very complicated. Uh, but the aspect where there were ordinary citizens who, didn't, who wanted to help, that, who wanted to resist, but didn't uh, want to go up and blow up bridges necessarily, um, but uh, found themselves pretty helpless. But this was one thing they could do. And they felt 
ne it was necessary. They had to do something. And uh, so, so they truly risked their lives. And when I went over to France and met some of these people, um, I was uh, just really surprised at um, how grateful they still were, how hospitable they were to me, how, they, how there was a deep bond between them and the aviators, and it went both ways. So there, did you find the girl in the blue beret? Um, one, one of the women who uh, uh, my father-in-law remembered as, as uh, the girl in the wearing something blue, yeah. yes, I, uh, she was my inspiration. She was wonderful. Mm. Um, the, your father-in-law's generation has been described as, uh, as the greatest generation. How, how do you feel about that now that you've spent some time with that generation? not only the Americans, but the Europeans who were part of that generation? Well, I'm a little distrustful of reductive labels. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the war was a lot more comple com complicated, I guess. But um, I, I am very impressed by some of these people I've met and um, um, on both sides. What? Uh what do you see as the legacy of that, of that generation? Um, I think it's hard for me to reduce that. Uh, they contribute to our nostalgia and our memory. Um, and I don't think um, they stop us from having wars. I don't think they stopped us from having wars. It would be nice if that was their legacy. It would be nice. <laughs> um, some folks who were involved with the war developed a real affection for the B-17. Oh, the B-17, so did I, yes. <laughs> uh, and because of the feeling they had for it, because of the danger and the difficulty of flying that machine, um, and, and when the, the Americans uh, got involved in the air war, um, most of the planes weren't coming back. It took a while for um, them to get better at it and, and to um, uh, decimate the Luftwaffe. So um, it was a very bold thing that some of these young men did when they got in those, those B-17s. Well, your, your father-in-law, you mentioned, was 23. He's about the age of a college senior. Yeah. And, and he's having this incredible experience. And loving it, and yet being terrified. <laughs> and not admitting. Um, it, it was, uh, um, I can't quite imagine it myself. I tried so hard, but I, uh, to try to imagine uh, a young man, because after all, I come at it as, as a woman, and I, it's a great leap of imagination to um, get at what a man is feeling when he uh, wants to go on a bombing mission. <laughs> well, Bobby Ann, this has been a very interesting conversation, oh. and I really appreciate you making some time for us here on, oh. uh, uh, on Outside the Book. Oh. And The Girl in the Blue Beret is a fascinating read, and I, I strongly recommend it to folks who are interested in a special perspective on an aspect of the Second World War that's perhaps a bit overlooked. And it's a love story, too, don't forget. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Our guest has been Bobby Ann Mason.